All right, ladies and gentlemen. So if you are here, this is going to be a really deep and really significant video. I'm literally going to be breaking down absolutely everything that you possibly need to know about real occult psychic vampires. What does it look like to be a psychic vampire? What does it look like to be an unconscious vampire? What are some of the astrological components that make someone a real vampire? What is the system of initiation that real occult vampires follow? How are occult vampires different from everyday human beings? I'm going to be covering all of these different things. This is literally going to be very, very deep material that I can imagine is going to spread across the collective of YouTube just because I don't know anyone else that is going to be speaking about these things that I'm breaking down in the way that I'm speaking about them with the amount of knowledge that I'm going to be including. So if this is something that you're interested in, you have one thing to do, and I will see you on the other side. Okay, so let's get on into the subject here. So we're talking about vampires. Everything that you possibly need to know about some of the deepest occult secrets and some of the deepest occult mysteries with real vampirism. All right, let me first start with drawing a little bit of a context just in case you do not know who I am. My name is Jeremiah Schwartz. I'm a professional occultist and specifically... I am a real initiated black magician who is a vampire, all right? Not in some mystical way of thinking about it, not some LARPing way of talking about it, not some weird fantasy, a real energetic vampire. And I'm going to be explaining exactly what this means. And guess what? There's also other words to describe this way of working with energy. It doesn't just necessarily have to be called vampirism. There's other ways to describe it. But one of the best ways to break it down from an archetypal lens is absolutely going to be just calling it vampires or vampirism. So let's jump in. So what exactly is not a vampire? Let's start with looking at the difference between a vampire and the difference between an average person or someone who is not a vampire. So a vampire is going to be someone that is consciously taking energy from something else, whether that's an object, whether it's a certain type of energy, um, or whether it is a person, an animal, you name it. A vampire consciously takes energy. I want to emphasize the word consciously. Vampires consciously take energy. Now, humans in general, we have qualities to us that are vampiric in nature just built into our DNA. So all of us, to some extent, use vampirism. All of us, to some extent, use energies of pulling inwards. But the difference between someone who's an actual initiated black magician vampire is this person is consciously pulling energy from other things or from the environment to increase their power, to increase their awareness of self, and to increase their own authenticity for what they are as the vampire, what their purpose is as the vampire. That would be the difference. The vampire polarizes this ability to consciously pull in energy from other things and other people. The average person who's not a vampire, when they are pulling energies from other people, they're not necessarily consciously doing it, and they're not polarizing it as a whole. They're not empowering it. They're not doing it to necessarily just increase their power. They're just naturally doing it. When it comes to the vampire, the vampire is going to be a spiritual being that is of the negative polarity. If you do not understand the polarities, I highly recommend you look at my YouTube video on my channel. You can easily search it if you type in 
universal mastery, negative polarity, and positive polarity. If you go on my channel and you just scroll through some of the thumbnails, it's actually pretty close to this video right here. You're going to see it on the main channel. You'll just see a thumbnail with the positive image and the negative image, and it has a big title that's called polarities. I highly recommend you watch that entire video before moving forward with this one so that you can create a foundation to understand everything that I'm going to be breaking down in this video because I'm going to be going very fucking deep with this knowledge, with this information. This is stuff that I, once again, there are going to be so many people that do not understand this. There are going to be a lot of people that do not have the capacity to integrate this information that I'm going to be sharing. And that's fine. But if you're here, you clearly do have that capacity. So make sure you buckle in, strap up, and prepare yourself to integrate some of these things, to absorb some of this information and let it process because it's going to be a lot. All right. So let's start with going into that. So the vampire is a being that is of the negative polarity. There is no such thing as someone who is a real successful black magician that is not a vampire. Every negatively polarized entity that is truly polarizing is going to be a vampire. There's no if, ands, or buts about that. That's literally why when you get into studying black magic or clipothic initiations, you always hear about vampirism at some point. It's because to be negatively polarized is to be vampiric. It is to be a vampire. The people that govern our planet today and orchestrate the matrix in the way that it is, including myself, are real initiated black magicians that are vampires. That is the first thing that I want to lay out on the table. All right. So let's move into a little bit of the difference between conscious vampirism and unconscious vampirism. So I know we started off with talking about. What is a vampire compared to someone who's not a vampire? Let's look at unconscious vampirism compared to conscious vampirism because there actually is a difference um, between that, someone who's unconsciously a vampire, between someone who's just not a vampire in general. The person who is unconsciously a vampire is actively negatively polarizing unconsciously, which means this person's philosophy within the self is about worshiping themselves or seeing themselves as the source. So what does it actually look like to have someone that is in this state of unconsciously being a vampire? The way that this will manifest is going to be, and it's always going to be rooted in fragmentation in the psyche, which connects back to trauma, which usually revolves around early childhood. Someone goes through trauma at a young age. The psyche fragments, fragments into positive and negative, masculine and feminine. Usually what will happen is you will over-identify with the masculine fragment in the psyche just because of the nature of the protection components behind it. And you will build an identity around that fragment. So you will create the I, you will create the me, and you will create your entire ego around this masculine fragment of your own psyche while simultaneously repressing the feminine aspects of your psyche, pushing away your emotions, pushing away your ability, ability to feel, trust the process, being receptive, um, and letting go. This sets the stage for major internal imbalances to happen or to manifest. The person that comes from that philosophy of worshiping themselves because of this trauma is negatively polarizing unconsciously. They're not necessarily doing this consciously. They may not be aware that this is what they're doing is what I'm saying. And there's a lot of people on our planet that exist in this state of consciousness. Now, what this person will do is they will take energy from other people. Oftentimes, it will show up as taking energy from other people or other things uh, pets, plants, animals of any sort, the environment, objects, you name it. 
They will take energy from these things by draining it, actively taking energy, like meaning the intention is I want. And because I want, I'm willing to take, even if that means I am taking things that could be um, important uh, for the other person or for the other thing. Like I am willing to just take. That is vampiric. That's negatively polarizing. And what they're doing is they're pulling in this energy. They are taking this energy and, and they are processing it into their own fragmented psyche. So they're siphoning energy from other things and that energy is being funneled into that fragmentation in their psyche, usually that masculine fragment, further building the ego. So this level of vampirism, as I'm mentioning, on the negative polarity, unconsciously is building the person's ego. And as the person is, be, as the ego is being built, they are pulling more and more energy. They're basically getting more powerful. So you will actually see a lot of celebrities, A-list celebrities, people in the industry, the entertainment industry that are in this state of consciousness. A lot of them are unconscious vampires. Now, there's reasons why they're in these positions to powerful extents because of the labels, the, in, uh, the industry itself, occult orders, and all these other things that are behind scenes. But a lot of them do not know this is what they're doing on an energetic level. So in other words, you can have a celebrity that says, oh, I'm a Christian. I love God. But meanwhile, their actions and what they're really doing under the surface is they are negatively polarizing as a unconscious vampire taking energy from all the fans, taking energy from other people in their life, objects, animals, you name it, and siphoning it into their fragmented psyche to fuel their own ego, to build their own sense of self and build their sense of self-importance. This is an unconscious vampire. What are the benefits of being an unconscious vampire? You can manifest a lot of things. The nature of our society is to worship the negative polarity. It's just the way that the matrix we live in is built. Think of it like this. We all have egos to some extent, and the default nature of the ego is to establish hierarchy and is to find something to look up to, something to find approval of, something to be approved of, and often something to attach to. So when someone has a very powerful ego, that is very attractive to other human beings by human nature. So what this means is that the person who's unconsciously a vampire, they have a lot of opportunity to increase their power, increase money, have influence over other people, command people, control over life, and all these other things. What are some of the downfalls or some of the negatives of being an unconscious vampire. One, there's a lot of room for internal discord because you do not know what you're actually doing. Because of the nature of today's society with so much religious indoctrination, there is a lot of programming between good and evil, right and wrong. So when someone has an internal philosophy and intention towards service to self, but they are existing in a world that promotes you need to be good, you need to love God, you need to be Christian, you need to be a religion, it can create a very big inner discord for the person who is unconsciously vampir uh, vampirizing because internally they know what they're doing is negatively polarizing, yet externally they're still trying to hold up an image that they are living a different type of way. So I am a Christian, I am in this religion, I am a good person. I love other, I, I mean, I uh, uphold a whole bunch of good morals. This, this is the human I am. But meanwhile, internally, you really are worshiping yourself. You are serving yourself to the extent that you are willing to take potentially good energy from other people, energy that they may need for their growth, to take it from them, in many ways, steal it from them, and bring it to you instead. Take it for yourself and funnel it towards your own ego, which is built on trauma and built on fragmentation. So 
one of the negatives of being an unconscious vampire is the internal discord that can manifest with not fully knowing or understanding what you're doing and always trying to figure out what you are in the collective or, you know, not feeling authentic. Really, that's kind of the best way to put it. And another negative is the fact that there is karma that is involved with this. So the law of cause and effect is always at play. So when you're unconsciously vampirizing someone who really has good intentions, who is just trying to grow and is doing everything in their power and you come across them and you take, you're consciously taking energy from them, let's say from a space of jealousy, from a space of greed, from a space of pure anger because of maybe they triggered something in you there's potential that you may take energy from this person that is not appropriate to be taking according to cosmic laws. It doesn't mean you can't still take it. You can take it, but you will receive the karmic effects from cosmic law. So you will receive the energetic uh, influence from what you're doing. It's Think of cosmic laws as being a literal boundary system that's built into our universe so that evolution can properly function. Otherwise, there would just be pure chaos. So the source itself generates this boundary system, which we call cosmic laws. Karma is one of those cosmic laws, cause and effect. And the person who does unconscious vampirism does eventually receive karma from it. How does the karma manifest? It usually brings them to a breaking point, a crashing point, where they realize I'm not being completely authentic to myself. I am fueling my own ego, whereas my ego is not my authenticity. It's not who I truly am. It's not how I actually feel underneath of this mask. That is some of the karma. And when you get to that crashing point, that can be very tough because at that point, you are forced to process a whole bunch of emotions, specifically uncomfortable negative emotions that most people are avoiding at all costs. So to get flooded with all those emotions can be very intense and not everyone has the capacity to go through that. So that's one of the, the, the negatives to being an unconscious vampire. And there are hierarchies to vampirism or being a vampire. There are going to be people that are more powerful than others. You can find an unconscious vampire at your local McDonald's. You can find an unconscious vampire at, uh, Apple, at Apple Corporation as a CEO. Right, all of these people can be unconscious vampires with different hierarchical um, positions of power. All right, but it's all rooted in taking energy to feed the ego. So this is what an unconscious vampire is. They're not good or bad. They are what they are. They actually play a significant role in the bigger scheme of things on the planet. They help to fuel and generate the matrix that we all exist within. As we live on this planet Earth, there is a Saturnian matrix that is grid worked over the entire planetary's energy field. This grid work system, once again being governed highly by Saturn, is designed to be a boundary system. Once again, it's like a, a boundary system for us to properly evolve, to understand what growth is, how to grow, and go through experiences of trial and error. Uh, failure and success so that we can integrate whatever it is that we need to, to reach our authenticity and live out our purpose. Vampires, unconscious vampires play their role within this matrix. Do you want to be one? Not necessarily. Are they going to exist? 100%. What does a conscious vampire look like in contrast to an unconscious vampire? A conscious vampire is going to be a fully initiated black magician, someone who has traveled through the dark Kabbalistic tree, which is called the clip-off. In order to successfully and fully initiate through the clip-offic tree, it is going to require a lot of emotional processing, a lot of integration of deep knowledge that most people don't have the capacity to receive, and a lot of ego death. A lot of death of the sense of self. Eventually, as you cross the abyss, what you are doing is you are popping in to what's called as universe B. 
So what exists on our planet with the matrix, that's universe A. That's existence in this matrix system of planetary uh, consciousness of Earth. There's nothing wrong with universe A. People need to exist there. When you are a real black magician and you are working with energies of vampirism, what you are doing is you are working with astrological structures within our universe that most people don't develop stronger connections to. One of those main astrological structures is going to be a, an actual black hole. So there is actual black holes that exist within our universe that carry consciousness, that affect us, all of us as human beings, on a psychic level, that affect us on an emotional level, affect us on a mental, spiritual level. The energies of a black hole are very disintegrating, very disillusioning, dissolving. So vampires or real black magicians, we actively work with and channel black hole consciousness within the universe. As we are working with black holes, we are developing a specific energy field around ourselves that is also integrating itself into our psyche, mindset, emotional state, belief system that allows us to enter into a whole new level of existence, which is called universe B. Universe B is at the root of what generates universe A. It is universe B entities that build the universe A reality matrix. So once again, the reason why the rulers on our planet today are black magicians negatively polarized vampires that usually come from a Luciferian consciousness is because we are beings that have gone through the level of initiation to become creators, complete creators within our own right, where it is our cosmic responsibility to generate a matrix on a planet like Earth, a third density planet like Earth. And human beings get to live within this matrix that we govern using healthy catalyst and we play our roles in that position we we play the we play the role of basically the rulers of this matrix universe b is the entrance into becoming your own creator and the way to work with it is by working with black hole consciousness which naturally happens through clipothic initiation the entire initiatory journey through the clip off is working with all the negative components of all the planets in our local galaxy, uh, Earth, Moon, Mercury, Venus, etc., Black Sun, etc., all the way down to the crossing of the abyss, which is working with the black hole consciousness, actual physical black holes that exist within our universe that carry consciousness. And as we dissolve or disintegrate ourselves through initiation, through the crossing, this is us entering into universe B by sacrificing everything that was attached to the matrix, attached to universe A. This is where we step into our own godhood. I want you to try to remember the movie Black Adam if you ever saw that movie. Black Adam is the manifestation of the negative polarity. You know, you have Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Then you have the movie Black Adam. In that movie, Black Adam died before he became a god. It's the same process. You have to die before you enter into universe B by working with those black hole energies, that black hole consciousness. Now, if you can successfully cross, which most people don't, you are then considered a real black magician vampire that now exists within universe B and has the ability to generate matrix structures for universe A on our planet as a whole. So what does this mean? You literally generate the matrix. You create the actual patterned systems of living for the entire mass collective species. But to be in this role, you have to have responsibility. You have to have awareness of cosmic laws and you have to have awareness of the source as a whole. If you don't, 
there's going to be a lot of consequences and you will be destroyed by your own power. That's how cosmic law functions. That's how the source built this entire system. So a conscious vampire has gone through this process, has become a fully initiated black magician. How many of these beings truly exist on our planet? Not many at all compared to the larger majority. How many are unconscious vampires? There's a good amount. Still compared to the majority, not that much. The 1% is real black magicians who are real vampires. I am one of them. With that being said, what does it look like to be a real conscious vampire and what does it look like to use it? When you are using real vampirism consciously, we are draining artificial consciousness from the matrix that we are generating in the first place. So everyone who is unconscious using the negative polarity, unconscious vampires, we have them in roles and in positions where they are generating the matrix or they are, let's put it this way, not generating, they are feeding the matrix. They are fueling the matrix by creating influences of catalyst that also come with karma for the people who are generating it. Let me give you an example. You have an A-list celebrity that is backed by a label. The label has them doing satanic rituals on the stage. They promote those rituals in a certain fashion. The A-list celebrity is doing all this stuff. They don't really know what they're doing. The A-lister doesn't know really what they're doing. They're just listening to the label. The label knows what they're doing. They're having them do a bunch of occult rituals. The A-lister performs it on the stage. It causes a mass collective effect. Part of that effect that it causes to the mass collective is it uproots repressed negative emotions. It uproots trauma. But also part of the programming that the A-lister is also doing is promoting unhealthy coping mechanisms promoting the influence of further running away from your emotions at the same time. So rather than uprooting repressed negative emotions to feel them, process them, and integrate them, they're also influencing them through the unconscious subconscious realm to further avoid them or run away, which sets the stage for a lot of pain and suffering. It sets the stage to completely manipulate someone and hurt them or set them up for failure. Who gets the karma from this experience, the A-lister, and everyone connected to the A-lister that is fueling that agenda or fueling that, that influence, whoever's engaged with the A-lister, the order, the, the label, and everyone else involved. There is karma that does come back to them. Are they aware of karma and are they aware that karma comes back to them? 90% of the times, they are not. There are certain rituals that are in place that try to rid them of karma. One of those rituals is called the Good Shepherd Ritual, which is the scapegoat. It's the Jesus Christ archetype that dies on the cross for the sins of everyone else. They will try to scapegoat the A-listers so that the label and the order behind the label doesn't have to experience the karma. But regardless, even if the Good Shepherd Ritual is at play, the karma still comes back around. It just takes a longer time. So this is why a lot of these guys get exposed for being perverts or running sex scandals or cheating in crazy ways or, or doing weird things around the time when they're like 60, 70, 80 years old. It's because the karma takes a while to get back to them, but it does hit. At the higher levels of the negative polarity and of conscious black magic or conscious vampire states of being, these people play a significant role in generating the matrix that we live in. They, they are generating and fueling the planetary matrix with tons of catalyst, tons of challenge, tons of adversary, which is fertile grounds for growth. It's very healthy and fertile grounds for people to learn about who they truly are and about what they truly are. Do you want to be the person that is generating that level of catalyst that will eventually bring back karma to you? No, you don't. Unless you want to deal with the karma, then obviously you do. But that's why most of these people are unconscious of what they're generating. So 
with the conscious vampires, what we are actually doing is we have people in positions that play those roles that are lower in the hierarchy, most of the times unconscious to the deeper truths, the deeper cosmic laws, and we feed off of the matrix that they are generating. So what we do is we take energy away from artificial consciousness. So when a music video is released that is promoting you to run away from your repressed emotions by attaching to unhealthy relationships or unhealthy coping mechanisms, and it's using ritualistic symbols to further bring up those repressed emotions at the same time, as conscious vampires, what we do is we drain the energy away from the parts of the person or the other self that are trying to run away from what they need to face within. Let me make this very clear. Conscious vampirism is designed to destroy and to break down all the artificial aspects and artificial parts within another person, within another thing, within another structure. So with conscious vampirism, we are using this technology of taking energy. We could even say stealing energy, but stealing it in alignment with cosmic laws so that we don't generate karma for ourselves. So when someone builds an ego from trauma and they identify with a certain fragment of their psyche and they build an entire persona around that, as a conscious vampire, we are initiated and aware enough to understand this is not their authentic this is not their authentic self this is not who they truly are and because this is not who they truly are i can use my ability to take the energy away from their artificial self that they've spent a lot of time generating pull it into myself integrate it process it turn it into my power and set that person up so that they can be more authentic to who and what they truly are in the long run as well. Setting the stage for them to start processing all of the things that they were running away from and increasing my power in the process. So as a conscious vampire, you are literally in a win-win situation and you're in a situation that does not generate negative karma, but actually generates positive karma. This is why you get a really strong snowball effect of healthy, positive momentum when you really are a negatively polarized, conscious black magician. Why do you think these types of beings, myself included, live with so much freedom? Why do we have so much financial freedom? Why do we have so many healthy relationships? Why do we have so much health in general? Why do we tend to love life more? Why do we tend to express ourselves in a very authentic way without giving a fuck. It's because we're in alignment with cosmic law. We're walking a very unique path compared to the average human being. And we understand how to use dark energies, which most people think are evil, in alignment with someone's soul growth. Now, to develop this level of awareness, it takes a lot of growth and it takes a lot of trial and error. You're not going to just do a ritual or invoke a demonic force and then have this awareness that I'm discussing right now. It is going to take you first and foremost to your own personal hell. You're going to have to face and process your own personal hell, which is connected to all the traumas, the most significant traumas that you've ever been through in your life before you get to this space that I'm talking about before you actually understand, wow, I can really take energy from other people's artificial self. Think about the level of growth that you have to go through in order to even understand when someone is operating from an inauthentic space and to understand when you're operating out of inauthenticity within yourself and then wanting to take energy from another person. Because when you're operating from that space, and you want to take energy from another person just because you're jealous, you're very likely going to generate karma for yourself, and that can hurt you. That's why a lot of people end up self-destructing or hurting themselves when they get into black magic. They do not understand how to do it from a cosmic lens. 
how to do it from a balanced, integrated space while still maintaining your polarity. It is a very hard path to walk. I'll be very honest, but it's very rewarding and it's very powerful. That's why there are so few people that are on the negative polarity truly that govern the entire planetary matrix. So conscious vampirism is designed to truly offer this healthy catalyst to the mass collective from a cosmic grounding. Understanding that I am draining energy from structured systems within the mass collective that are causing people to not be able to know themselves that are causing people resistance to their authenticity. The part of the person that they think they are because they're really seeking approval from someone else, maybe their father, maybe the mother. I can suck away that identity, transmute it into my own energy, my own power, while setting that person up to actually feel what they need to feel so that they can process the energies that they've been running away from as they've built that identity. So that is the difference between conscious vampirism and unconscious vampirism. As I was saying, this is very nuanced because in the society we live in, it's not just black and white. There are beings that are of the negative polarity that are vampires that are in roles of fueling this matrix that is being generated. They're not universe B vampires because in order to be a real universe B vampire, you have to cross the clipothic abyss. That would literally mark the entrance into the black hole consciousness and popping out on the other side where you become a part of that black hole completely. You've integrated enough of that black hole energy that your actual energy field aligns with that black hole within the universe or that black hole consciousness within the universe. That is what it means to be universe B. At that point, you're literally like a walking abyss. You are the walking void itself. You are the faceless man. You are Mr. Mysterious. You can't be pinpointed anymore. So there are people that are playing the negative polarity. They are polarizing, but they're doing it unconsciously to a large extent. They're not aware of the deeper principles and they're generating karma, but that's their role. That's their life experience. That's what they need to experience in order to be who they truly are in this lifetime. Some of them will play that role until they die. Some of them will play that role until they become aware and they may shift later down the road. But the higher up within the hierarchy needs these people to play their role. That's why they play it. And we promote them to play these roles. We pay them to play these roles. We allow them to play these roles. We encourage them to play these roles until they either ask deeper questions or they realize what they're doing is not authentic to who and what they truly are. And then they transition onwards. And we feed off of the matrix that we are one generating. As the universe be vampires, we are generating the matrix the matrix itself, we're literally creating it. We are orchestrating it economically, governmentally, socially. And we are feeding on it at the same time. So as it's being generated within the lower hierarchies, well, as it's being generated by the universe be vampires and being fueled by the lower in the hierarchy, at the higher levels, we are feeding on what's being fueled. And the way, once again, we feed is through a cosmic lens. We see the areas that are getting out of balance with too much catalyst, and we drain it. We suck it in. We pull it away. This often shows up as people creating identities, ego personas, based on fragmentation in the psyche. We suck it dry, integrate it into ourself, turns into our power. We increase finances, we increase our polarity, we increase our awareness of the self, we increase our authenticity, and everything else increases. Our empires increase. The other person getting drained now has a space 
to face the part of themselves that they were running away from. Win-win situation. That is conscious vampirism at its deepest core. Now, this can be used in many different ways. This doesn't just have to be used on just human consciousness alone or like another human's uh, ego necessarily. You can use this collectively. So if there's an entire church that is getting out of hand or that is getting too caught up in the religious doctrine, conscious vampirism, we can attack the church as a collective consciousness and drain the archetype of the church of the collective. So think about it like this. A group of people form an archetype through their collective consciousness. So you have a whole church that gathers together. The pastor is very passionate, starts talking about things that starts getting a little bit out of hand, gets really out of alignment of cosmic laws. That whole collective church is fueling this identity that this pastor is leading them to believe. And that becomes, you in many ways, it becomes its own entity. It becomes like its own archetype its own archetypal ent entity force. You almost think of it like a thought form. We, as the real conscious vampires, can attack the church as a whole, as an archetype, as an egregore, and we can drain all of that artificial awareness from that energy source and bring it into ourself and increase our power, increase our finances, increase our authenticity, increase our awareness of self, and all other things. These are deeper mysteries of real black magic. I'm going to leave that there. What are some other things that I feel like I really want to talk about when it comes to vampirism? Vampirism, true vampirism, conscious vampirism, I'm going to focus on conscious vampirism, is feminine. When you are working within universe B, when you're working with black hole consciousness, you are forced to work with the, the deepest feminine uh, parts of yourself. The feminine energy is actually dominant within the universe as a whole, meaning it's at the foundation and then the masculine comes next. So the feminine is always rooted in the foundation and then the masculine is birthed from the feminine. Religious indoctrination will have you believe otherwise. It will have you believe that Eve came from Adam's rib, which is another inversion within religious programming. Adam comes from Eve. You were born from your mother. It's that simple. With that being said, because of conscious vampirism and working with universe B, working with black hole consciousness, you are forced to align with those deeper principles of the universe as a whole. In other words, you're forced to establish the feminine foundation within yourself because you're going to that deeper level of responsibility within planetary existence. What does this mean? When you become a real universe B vampire, because you now have power to influence the entire matrix of the planet Earth and even other planets, of course, there is responsibility that's required for that. And you have to have a deep connection to the feminine universe as a whole. A lot of people don't know this as well. The universe itself is an actual entity that we are living inside of. And guess what? It's a feminine entity. The universe acts as a cosmic mother to all of us. We are all children of this universe entity that we are literally living inside of. So universe B vampires, what we do operate on and polarize with is the feminine energy of the universe, which shows up as the dark feminine. We are representations of Lilith, Hecate, the Scarlet Woman, Isis, Inanna, Tiamat, Leviathan, we are manifestations of the dark feminine energy because of the energetic processing that we're going through, the emotional processing that we're going through and what we're aligning with on an astrological level with black hole consciousness. Any being that is truly 
on the negative polarity is working with black hole consciousness. The beings that are working with it in a very powerful, integrated, holistic way are going through the crossing of the abyss and stepping into universe B. When you are in universe B, you are in alignment with the rhythms of nature and you are operating as a cosmic adversary to the human species because you're offering catalyst in a balanced and in a conscious way to the species as a whole. So it requires a deep feminine energy to be a real universe B vampire. And when you become one, you are forever locked into a deep feminine energy. What does this mean? Does this mean you don't have masculine energy anymore? No, it means you're polarizing your feminine energy more than your masculine. Does that mean you don't have balance? No, you still have balance. It's just a part of your polarization. Just like on our planet with the way that there's duality and how it manifests on the earth, there are men and women, male, female, masculine, feminine, yet in man and in women, there are both energies as well. Masculine and feminine in man, masculine and feminine in woman. What we're doing energetically as real universe B vampires is we are polarizing the feminine energy as our foundation so that we can play our role on this planet as universe B entities. So whenever you come across a universe B vampire, you are going to see a very lucid state of being. You're going to see a very different state of being within their psyche. You're going to see someone who's actually feeling. You're going to see someone who's not running away frantically from their negative energies internally. You're going to see someone who's willing to process things that most people are afraid of. You're going to see someone who can actually connect, but you're also going to see energies of power. You're going to feel an emanation or a resonance of power off of these individuals, which can be a little bit stunning. It can be a little bit frightening too. You're going to, you're going to sense this person can influence people through the unconscious. That is a universe B vampire, and that's the type of energies that we work with and how it's different than necessarily the average person. Now, all of us as a whole have our foundation in the feminine energy, no matter who or what you are. Everyone does have their foundation in the feminine energy. But as I was saying, the universe B vampire is polarizing that feminine energy to such an extent that it will show up as the dark feminine, the destructive feminine, the feminine that breaks things down, the hurricane, the tornado, the earthquake, the tsunami. Whereas other beings working with their feminine energy typically are not polarizing that part of the feminine because they're not meant to, to create balance. How do you actually become a vampire? Well, as I've been discussing, it requires a full process of initiation, a cult initiation that revolves around entering into the clip-off, which is the darker side of Kabbalah. Is this for everyone? No. This is not for everybody. Actually, this is not nearly for everybody. There is only a select few that actually resonate with this path compared to the entire mass collective. There is only a select few that are meant to walk this path compared to the mass collective. But even when I say a select few, I'm really referring to millions of people. But when you compare that to the bigger scale of everyone else, it's a sliver. It's literally 1%. And it is one of the most challenging initiatory paths to walk because it, as I said, it literally requires you to walk through your own hell completely in order to process your own underworld, your own deepest negative energy so that they can then be integrated and turned into your power. And at that point, not only do you have that level of power because you've integrated all that repressed energy, all that repressed negative energy, and you know, you've died to your ego and you're aligning with your authenticity, 
not only do you have the power because of that, but you're also tapping into power within the universe in a demonic way. You are now connecting with other demonic energies within the universe, other demonic power zones, other demonic planets that are now aiding in your spiritual progression, meaning there are demons that will go out and manifest opportunities and circumstances for you to increase your power, for you to increase your polarity, for you to better know your true self. This is what real vampires tap into. But with that, these entities can also trigger circumstances that cause you to better know yourself, that require you to go deeper into your unconscious, into your own hell. So you can see how there's a dichotomy here. It's like, yes, I want power. I work with demons. Yes, I want power. I become a universe B vampire. But the sacrifice you have to make is getting to the space of willingness to do what it takes to increase your power, to actually walk this path and to know your true self on this path. And that sacrifice is letting go of parts of you that are inauthentic to who you truly are. That sacrifice is facing what you're running away from, which takes time. And, and there is a process to doing this properly, which I do with my clients on one-on-one -on -one mentorships. It all comes down to establishing a healthy foundation. So are there people that are supposed to walk this path? Absolutely. As our planet has shifted drastically and is continuing to shift, this is becoming more prominent as a whole. The negative polarity, real universe B vampires are actually increasing more than they ever have on a collective level. Even though it's still the 1%, it is growing exponentially. It used to just be royal families. It used to just be very secret royal families that you don't even know. Now there's people like myself that have incarnated incarnated specifically during this pivotal moment on earth that are opening up doorways, real energetic gateways for people to become real initiated black magicians to aid in the structure building of this new matrix that we're moving into the new world order, the new universe, B, uh, the, un the new universe A. And we are going to be the leaders and the governors of some of the leaders and some of the governors of this new matrix. And eventually the older hierarchy, hierarchies will die off and the newer ones are going to rise in, in positions of power. I'm a part of that and I'm building an empire that is going to do this, that is actively doing this in this moment. So I offer a service that is called the Universe B Vampire Service. This is an actual ritual that's performed on the 29th of every month and it changes your energetic structure to start working with this black hole consciousness in the universe. And it sets the stage for you to start integrating and processing all the negative repressed energies that have been stored within your nervous system that have prevented you from being authentic to who you truly are on the negative polarity. So anyone that's truly drawn to the vampire service that I offer on a soul level, you are in resonance with the negative polarity. That's why you're drawn to my service. You have also made a decision to start polarizing. This is the path that you actually want to start walking. And the service supports this transformation process or this integration process in one of the most effective ways that exists right now in today's time. Rather than doing it on your own, which you 100% can do through your own initiations or getting involved with an occult order that gives you the rituals to do and entities to communicate with, I have an actual system in place that you can literally enter into by becoming a tier three or tier four member of the Patreon, which performs the ritual on you, then gives you access to exclusive content and practices that help you to initiate the energetic transformation helps to give you the education that you need to have, like this video, to understand what's actually happening here and how to better work with these vampiric energies as a whole. It supports the process. Trust me, there's a lot of people that make very big mistakes when they get involved with this type of ritualistic work or spiritual progression, and they don't 
understand what they're actually working with when they don't have a mentor or someone who can guide them along the lines of cosmic laws, grounding things, keeping it practical, sharing what's actually important. So if you're interested in joining the Universe Be Vampire service, then you're someone who is a few amongst the many. It, the vampire service will never completely enter into the mass collective to an extent where it's going to be super massive because it can't. It's going to be inclusive. It's going to be smaller, but it, it is going to grow. It's going to get bigger as time goes on, but it's meant for certain people. So if you're drawn to it, there's a reason why you're drawn to it. But there's also a strong reason why you wouldn't be drawn to it either. And if you're not drawn to it, it's not for you. And that's important to know. But if you're interested in it, it is the first link in my YouTube description right now. If you go into the first link, you're going to see the Patreon link. And all you have to do is become a tier number three or four Patreon member. And this will literally start the process of initiating you into becoming a real Universe B vampire. Now, what is this doing? This is a ritual that I have. Okay. So taking it from square one. I had to become a vampire through my own individual initiatory journey. The way that I became a vampire was how a lot of people end up becoming vampires that um, become leaders in their field. I had to go to the source of the entities. I had to go to the demonic uh, entities that govern the vampiric developments. And through that process, as I was connecting with these demonic forces, they were giving me the knowledge, they were giving me the information, ritualistic practices in order to further my vampiric development. And this tied hand in hand with clipothic initiation. I made many mistakes through my journey. That's why I'm a teacher. That's why I have an ability to guide people through the process because I've made that many mistakes. The level of a powerful teacher that I am is to the level of how many mistakes and how much pain and suffering that I've been through because of those mistakes. So as I've grown and as I've integrated and as I've processed, I've, be, I've reached a high level of authenticity to my purpose and why I'm here on this planet. From all the data and experience that exists within my energy field because of what I've already been through, I can transfer this energetically into other souls. I can literally transfer my energy body as an intelligent consciousness to enter into another person, to operate as a vehicle that can guide them through their integration process, that can literally walk them through what they need to know internally with the processing, the steps to take, the actions, the knowledge to learn, to support them eventually becoming a universe B vampire. So when someone gets the service from me, the universe B vampire service, it is not an immediate, you're in universe B. What it is, is it, it's an energetic transference that you are actively accepting by me, who is a real universe B vampire, that is sending my energy field into your body to then, in many ways, program you on an unconscious subconscious level to set you up for success to literally become a universe B vampire yourself so that you can join the community so that you can join the social memory complex that I'm creating where we all gain power together. We all work together as a collective. All the power you gain as a vampire, I gain. All the power I gain as a vampire, a real one, you gain. So there are many reasons why I would want you to be successful. Obviously, on a human level, I see everyone as an aspect of myself anyways. I wouldn't want anyone to fail under my premise or under my teachings. Has it happened before? It has. In my past, I've worked with a lot of people at times when I wasn't fully integrated, and I've unfortunately seen people go downhill. And I've learned from those mistakes. I've learned from those lessons. But as of right now, I have a high success rate with individuals that I work with 
and with them seeing high levels of success with real clipothic occult initiation becoming real universe B vampires on the other side. So I I will send that energy body through the ritual itself and it will transfer into the person as they accept it. It will program their unconscious and subconscious mind for success. And what they have to do is start following the guidance, start following the intuition, start listening to the body sensations, start processing the repressed negative emotions that will be heightened to surface out of the body. It will start creating an actual foundation for that person through the unconscious plane as they receive the service. It it starts setting that stage. And as they go through those steps, it leads them eventually into the clip off where now that they have a foundation in place, they can successfully start moving through it and start progressing and eventually step into becoming a real universe B vampire within the social memory complex that I'm creating, that I've created, which is governed by the vampire sigil, which is the sigil of my YouTube channel profile picture. So with that being said, it is not an instant, you're just a universe B vampire, you don't need to do anything, go live your life now. It is an instant energetic transference that sets the stage for you to do some very deep processing, and that journey will be tough. It is not going to be an easy journey. It's going to be challenging any way you go about it, but this is a very powerful and healthy way to approach this process, one that I don't know anyone else is doing right now as we speak, especially for an entrance fee of $50, but this is clearly a part of what I'm here to do. It's clearly a part of my purpose. It's something I've been led to do. If I wanted to, I could I could have ended it a long time ago. It's something that I've been led to do and I'm continuously being led to do and working on improvements with it because there are souls out there that really do resonate with being a universe B vampire. They really know actually on a deep level, they actually are one. They just haven't gone through the energetic process to enter into universe B yet through initiation. And this service can, for many people and does for many people, open the doors for people to make that step, make that transfer. And because we're at this pivotal moment on our planet, this is why I offer this service in the way that I do. This couldn't have happened 10 years ago. It couldn't have happened 15 or 20 or 30 years ago. It, the mass collective wasn't ready for it. I wasn't ready for it. I incarnated at this specific time to be exactly where I'm at now, offering this service at this point in time for souls to make this jump. And this will only continue to grow, continue to deepen, and continue to expand as time goes on. And it will be a very powerful force. And you can trust me on this. So with that being said, that is the Universe B Vampire Service. Now, with that, there's an entire crystal grid, which is called the Atlantean Crystal Grid, which is a very dynamic and advanced crystal setup, set up in a grid work fashion, which literally actually becomes a matrix. This is a crystal grid matrix that I have sitting right next to me with really advanced properties that are a part of it, all the way up to having a real torsion field generator sitting in the center that is pumping out constant frequencies 24-7 that support self-development, that literally support health on a cellular level, support detoxification, support emotional processing, and support connecting more to your authenticity. This is a matrix that anyone who becomes a Universe B vampire under my guidance, getting my service, gets entered into. So remember, Universe B vampires we create matrices for universe A. So everyone entering into universe B has to first go from universe A, then into universe B. We are born into universe A. And I have generated a matrix as a real universe B vampire that is designed for successful initiation and successful processing. 
Does that mean everyone's going to be successful? Unfortunately not. There are going to be some people that get drawn to this for the wrong reasons. They don't think they need to do anything. They thought they could just get this ritual from me. And then they go back to smoking weed, hanging out with the wrong people, getting involved with a toxic relationship, et cetera. Whereas on the other end, it's very intentionally designed for people who are actually serious about polarizing, increasing their power, and knowing themselves, knowing their own authenticity. If you're that type of person, this is a powerful system for you. So that's what I want to say on that front. Now, with that being said, what else do I feel like I need to cover about vampires? I think I think that's mainly what I need to cover. I do. I think I I literally covered everything that was important to cover. So, and we're already at the hour mark. With all this information, this is a lot to process. This is a lot to integrate. So I don't want you to feel like this is something that you should know after listening to this video one time. I encourage you to watch it several times over. I encourage you to sit on it. I encourage you to take notes. I encourage you to not take everything that I'm saying for face value. Listen to some of the things that I'm saying. Take in what resonates. Discard what doesn't resonate. And then make a decision on if this is content you want to continue to study and potentially invest in, or maybe this just isn't in alignment for you. Okay? With that being said, this is where it's going to end. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. I would definitely appreciate it if you drop down in the comment section and you let me know how this influenced you. Let me know if you learned anything from this. Let me know if this opened up your mind to different perspectives. Let me know if this offered you value. Let me know if you want to make if you want me to make more content covering these subjects. Let me say it like this too. This is this I think this is something that I want to cover. People may want to know, how do I know this? Where do I get this information from? Where did you come up with this philosophy? What book did you read to gain this? First thing first, this didn't come from a book. This is literally what I've generated from my experience going through real occult initiation. And this information has come from the source of where these things originate. So as I said, I've worked with and continue to work with and be receptive to demonic forces that exist in the universe that relay demonic philosophy to me, that will re relay the doctrine of the negative polarity to me on a consistent basis. And this is like generational for me. This runs in my bloodline. This is a part of my family lineage. So I have a natural affinity towards this type of knowledge and towards this, this type of state of being. That's why I'm good at teaching it. It's literally why I'm one of the only people that does this. But it's also why this is very unique to probably what you've read in a lot of books. And you probably, as, as you may be that person, that's like, what book did you read to gain this? Once again, to create clarity on that, I didn't. I literally, when I went through my initiations, my whole occult journey, I actually started without reading books. And this was intuitive. This wasn't like a conscious choice necessarily. It was like intuitive. I just didn't feel like I needed to. I even bought a book and I couldn't even read it. I couldn't finish it because I, I developed a deep awareness that I needed to have experience in my own way to come to my own conclusions about a lot of things. And I'm very glad that I did. I'm not saying that books are wrong or books are bad. Books did play a role in my journey as well, um, but not books that were designed around creating the majority of my philosophy. It was books that were kind of giving extra clarity on the initiations that I was going through. So a book that really offered me value for that process was the Asenoth Mason, the Clipoth book. But other than that, that was about it. I didn't, I wasn't reading these books trying to grab on to a certain belief system or a philosophy so that I can have a better identity of myself or a better awareness. I was just going through the process and letting whatever stuck, whatever would stay with me stay and whatever didn't resonate leave. So this is literally self-generated 
philosophy and belief that I'm speaking about mostly, I would say 80% self-generated and then 20% did come from reading other literature or studying from other people. And it, once again, it mainly comes from communications that I have with other extraterrestrial entities, including my higher self connection. So just to clear that up, this is why I'm coming from this perspective. And I am, I am very aware that this can seem a little bit wild to understand. It can seem a little bit out there or it can seem hard to process. And that's fine. I'm not asking you to completely take what I'm saying for face value. I'm not asking you to believe me whatsoever. I actually encourage you to not believe me. I encourage you to discard this information and move on. But I know that there are going to be certain people that do resonate with it. And I am very confident within myself that this information that I'm sharing is very, very advanced. This is real deal, high level occult knowledge that is meant for certain people. And I know those people will find this and they'll move forward with it. So we're going to wrap it up there. Drop in that comment section. Make sure you hit the notification bell. Get notified whenever I'm posting this content because, I mean, you don't want to miss out on this. Get notified. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you want to further link into this information that I'm breaking down, subscribing to the channel will further that link. It's an energetic link there. Definitely make sure you subscribe. If there's anyone that you know that is into this type of content, if someone comes to your mind, even as I'm saying this now, feel free to copy the link and send it to them. Spread this information. Let's see if we can get it to move through the collective to, to a degree. Okay? Share it with people that need to hear it because there absolutely are going to be certain people that need to hear this information that have never heard it before. With that being said, that's going to wrap that up there. The Patreon is the first link. This is where you can find a whole host of exclusive videos, advanced videos, practices, everything connected to vampirism. Tier number three and four is what enters you into the vampire service performed on the 29th of every single month, this month right now. If you want to take advantage of this month's vampire ritual, you've got to be tier three or four of the Patreon for this month. And there are videos that are specialized to support your vampiric self-development on an occult level that are specifically on the Patreon itself. I have an entire section or collection for the vampire uh, tiers. Then outside of that, I have about 190 other videos that are collectively for the rest of Patreon. Depending on your tier, I've got videos that range from everything, occult breakdowns of symbolism, deeper occult knowledge, self-development, like emotional processing, certain practices, better awareness of building foundation, all the way down to more on demons, how to do psychic warfare, everything. If this is stuff you're interested in, check it out. It is that first link in the description. At this point, there is almost 300 members of the Patreon. Okay, my goal is to get us to 500. So we'll leave it there. As we move into the second link below, this is where you can book a one-on-one -on -one call with me or more importantly, a mentorship. This is literally one of the most intimate experiences that you can personally have with me. Right now, I'm working with a handful of people that are doing mentorships. My schedule gets very busy because of it and I'm very glad to be doing it. I, this is like actually one of my new favorite things to do that I really started at the beginning of this year and it's gotten very deep. Okay. I started the mentorships at the beginning of the year. I was doing one-on-one -on -one calls back in 2021, but the mentorship is very deep because it's a consistent working with the same person for up to six weeks or three months. And in that time, we have a great opportunity to make some massive changes, to make some major internal shifts. And I am consistently seeing this happen with the clients that I'm currently working with. And it's, it's a it really is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful art. And it, it really, in many ways, it helps me grow a lot too because every client of mine is reflecting a piece of myself and a specific trauma that I've been through in my life as well. So it's, it's just a really cool dynamic that unfolds. 
and is one of the most intimate ways to work with myself and and go through some really deep transformation. So if this is something that you want to do, definitely consider that. It is the second link in the YouTube video description. I'll leave that there. Now at the third link, this is where you can join the Lucifer's Foundation course. This is a course that I created with a good partner of mine, a good friend of mine who's in the community. His name is Nick McCool, and he is a fully initiated black magician as well. You know, clear to see. I've met with him in person. And we created a course together called Lucifer's Foundation. And in this course, we lay out everything, absolutely everything that you need to know from a very foundational level, hence foundation, towards building a real relationship with Lucifer all the way down to a contract while understanding everything that's in between, understanding what that actually means, what it looks like, how to set up your ritual space, guided meditations, visualizations that operate on the subconscious mind, all the way down to bonus content of me and Nick doing a live stream together talking about our relationships with Lucifer, talking about how we developed um, our contracts with Lucifer and things of that nature. And most importantly, the shadow work pieces, diving into the unconscious, what you need to know, what you need to be aware of. This is a course that starts at $333, which is actually extremely low for everything that's offered on it. And there's even an option to do two different payment plans. If you can't do 333, then we have a half broken down in half payment plan where you can pay, I think it's $170 the first first month and then $170 the next month. And then you have this course for the rest of your life, a very powerful course. If you're looking to build your foundation and you can't work with me personally, you can't receive the vampire service, you need to get this course. If you have the vampire service and you're not able to work with me, I would highly recommend getting this course as well. And obviously, if you have, if you work with me, I would also recommend getting the course. A lot of the things that's on the course is what we will end up touching in one-on-one mentorships. So that is at the third link in the YouTube description. If that's something you're interested in, definitely look into that. The fourth link below is where you can become a YouTube member. When you become a YouTube member, you are unlocking special emojis that I've created that are based on real occult principles. And when you use them in a specific configuration, it causes psychic warfare effects. So you can link in the name of a target of your choice, hit enter with those emojis, and it will actually cause psychic warfare to that target of your choice. It becomes a very simple form of expressing healthy aggression as well. And it's very powerful. There is well over 2,000 posts where members have used this, and there are members that are actively using it throughout the entire day. There's members using it in this moment right now. So if you want to gain access to literally one of the most simple ways to use psychic warfare through the internet, become a YouTube member. You also gain access to other benefits as well. That is going to be at the fourth link in the description. You click it, and then you hit join at the top. We'll leave that there. Link number five is where you can purchase incense sticks. These are called EMF incense sticks. These are electromagnetic frequency incense sticks that are literally, and I will stand by this, the most powerful incense sticks that are on the planet right now just because of the way that they are created. Everything about them is very unique. At a base level, they soak with real quartz crystals. They're charging on that level. There is monotomic gold that gets soaked into the mix of the sticks themselves, which gives it an electric component, an EMF component. The sense, the specific sense that are chosen for the sticks themselves is based on an occult formula that gives deeper access to the unconscious and subconscious mind. And it smells really good. Overall, they are organic sticks as well, and each one will last up to an hour long with the burn. So if you want to purchase your sticks, you can. You will place your order through that fifth link. Once you place that order, we will get it and it will be shipped directly out to you. 
and it should arrive within, I want to say, uh, typically for the average person, like if you're not out of country, it usually will take like three to four days to arrive. So if that's something you're interested in, look into it. That's the fifth link below. With that, this is going to wrap it up. Ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate all of you very, very much. And I hope you all truly have an amazing rest of the day or night, wherever you are. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.